I'm back with another update video on the desktop built on Rust, the Cosmic desktop from System76. Today, we're going to be exploring Alpha 5 as it has been officially released. I'll first start out by saying there's not a whole lot to visually view, although there are a bunch of fixes that we're going to review. They just released a new 2025, the first year of Cosmic Alpha 5 released, and we're going to get into the details here of what System76 did since the last alpha. But today I do want to spend some time and talk about a few bugs and improvements I would love to see on the desktop environment. The first thing I want to check out is the display settings and the fractional scaling. In order to see this better, I'm going to go to 150%. This works fairly well. I can also go down 125%, which is where I'm going to keep things. I do want to let everyone understand that this fractional scaling is working just fine right now as some people have been wondering whether or not that feature works. We'll keep it at 125 just to be able to see things a little better here. But while we're in the settings, we're going to check out the systems and accounts because this got updated. If you go into users, now we have multiple users that you can click on and actually edit information such as the host name, the username and password and whether or not they are an administrative user or a super user. You can also add new users if of course you're an administrator. So this is a welcomed update to the system and accounts category of the settings application. So far so good, works fairly well, does not expose the password. What I don't like to see is when there's characters already predefined, especially if it's the amount that your password is. One thing I don't like about this feature, or at least I don't quite understand yet, I just changed the admin's password, presumably did. I have no indication if it actually took, presumably it did, but notice as I'm typing some sort of a password in and I click out, I notice that this goes back to an edit field, but I have no idea if this password actually took. I guess I can give this a shot real quick just to see if it does take across. And sure enough, I had to press enter in order to get the authentication required. I was really hoping that this was the case that we would have to put in the current administrative user's password in order to actually change the password. Or if it was a regular user, of course, the regular password to that user's account, because this would have been a very important thing to miss, but I'm glad to see this. So pressing enter is actually the magic key there. If you don't want to, it's, I guess you can actually click out and it just goes back to whatever was previously set. I'd probably like to see another key because it's not obvious that you have to hit enter whenever you're typing things in, or at the very least, it says something in a dialogue around here in order to realize that you do have to hit enter or maybe another icon's better whatever, just to make it a little more user-friendly. That's just my suggestion. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you as well. We're going to continue on. Let's exit out of here. We viewed that in the settings. That's one of the new things here. And System76 kicks off 2025 with a new Cosmic Alpha release. Our team is rested and racing towards an approaching beta of our new Rust-based desktop environment for Pop! OS and other distributions. Well, this is fantastic news as a lot of us are expecting a beta fairly soon, and it looks like the team is ready to do that final lap to get there, which is fantastic news. As some people have predicted that maybe in the March timeframe, we might get a beta, that'd be fantastic. We'll see if the System76 team accomplishes that. Either way, Cosmic Alpha 5 brings an early version of Cosmic Media Player user settings and essential updates to alt tab variable refresh rates and more. Let me show you the alt tab feature. So alt tab was available, but you can see the varying different windows open right here above in what I call the launcher. You can hit control one, two, or three in order to open this up. But in my experience, that seems a little weird because if I do alt tab and then I have to press control, let's just say three, for example, I have to hold down the alt key the entire time in order to actually get it across. Or maybe it's just telling me shortcuts. It definitely does not do that. So. Again, I do alt tab and then I can do control, for example, one to get me over to Firefox. That's not what I wanted to show off though. Alt tab now cycles through and remembers where you were last at. For example, I was on Firefox. So the reordering should be the terminal, which I'm currently in. And the default behavior is to go to the second place where you were previously at instead of kind of a round robin approach. It's a backtrace or back approach, which just means go to the last used tab, which I personally like because 
a lot of the time you're just going between two tabs. For example, right now I'm going between these two applications. So that all works very good. You can also use the super tab key in order to do that as well. Variable refresh rate updates have been made. VRR has been refined to take into account the display's minimum refresh rate. As it says here, that will help the cursor appear and move more smoothly across the screen, even if the application is below the minimum refresh rate. Some quality of life improvements there. But one thing I'm specifically excited about is something new in the terminal. Let's see what happens if I do something like system76.com. Well, there's no match, but notice I can click now on that website in the terminal and that will pop things up and go use your default browser to actually take you to a link. So there's officially link clicking inside of the terminal. This is a great feature because before it was a little cumbersome to actually click on these things, especially if some documentation or manual made reference to a URL in the terminal. Maybe I ran a command and needed to go get some sort of a package from the web. Well, now I have access directly by clicking link. And before we get to some of the things I think need to be improved, please take a moment to like the video to get it out to more people and get others excited about Linux and programming. Also think about subscribing below so you don't miss videos like this when they get released. Sometimes YouTube gets finicky. Let's go see some changes to the context drawer. For example, if we check out a picture now, our context drawer information and details are supplied on the right hand side. It does look great as you can check out certain information about the file that's created and or media file. For example, this is an image. It tells you it's an image PNG, what its name is, the size, when it was created, modified and accessed, how large it is and a simple open button that will open it up for you. Very easy to use, very easy to understand. Now, the one thing that's brand new is a media player. We can now see that Cosmic Media Player is located on the system. We're going to launch it and it says no video open. Well, it's not quite updated on the system to run things. You can check out, for example, this video file that I'm going to try to open and it just says no video open. I am at the latest and greatest alpha five. You can tell by if you go over to the terminal, let me make things a little bigger here. I'm going to clear things out. In order to update your systems to the next alpha version, it's pretty simple. You just have to do two commands and I'll do them all at once. So sudo apt update and and or ampersand ampersand sudo apt upgrade. It's as simple as this. Type in your administrative user's password and this is going to update all the mirrors and then grab any upgradable packages for the system. Right now I have zero to upgrade. So this tells me I'm up to date. I have the latest cosmic applets and this is how you can get into alpha five yourself. If you already have one of the alphas installed on one of your computers. Now, since the media player, we can't really check out. Let's take a look back at the blog post to kind of get a feel for what this is looking like. So cosmic media player is now the default media player. Well, we see that, but it doesn't really launch anything because it's a work in progress. Cosmic media player uses Vulkan for rendering and VAAPI for decoding where available for efficient video playback. Audio playback is supported as well. We can see here a preview of the media player using something from a Blender animated short. Looks very minimal, looks fine to me. And here is a mock-up of the design that includes a tree view on the left. You can see that they have music and videos open as far as folders go and what files are underneath those. Very good. We have this to look forward to as they are completing the full set of desktop applications. Cosmic Media Player has been touted for the last couple releases, and now we start seeing some of the design and build of those features. Now, we'll get back to some of the bug fixes, but I wanna talk bugs first. Talking about video, and perhaps you're using OBS on your system. One thing you'll notice is I am currently running OBS, but there's really no way to tell whether or not you're recording. I don't necessarily like that. Let me show you what I mean. I'm currently recording the setup and I don't see, for example, a red recording symbol anywhere. I personally really like this on the desktop environment. A simple symbol to know whether or not something is recording you is great. It doesn't even have to be necessarily a recording symbol on, for example, the application itself, but maybe just a recording symbol up top or even changing the color or adding a microphone symbol up here would be a good way to note that something is currently recording you. I think this is important, at least in my opinion, 
because it's a really nice indication of whether or not things are not only working properly, but maybe you are working in the background and you forgot to shut them off. Either way, I'd love to see an improvement there. And while we're on the topic of OBS, I wanna show off a bug. Currently, I'm running OBS directly from the terminal. I have it over here on the left-hand side, and that seems to be running fine. What I found was I had to actually install a second version of OBS in order to actually get proper recording. And you'll notice here we have OBS Studio and OBS, and OBS Studio. This right here is the native package of OBS Studio. This is the Flatpak version. And if I click on the Flatpak version, that's going to launch another instance. I'm fine launching it anyway because I want to show off the bug. Here is a new feature that System76 added to Cosmic Desktop that allows you to know and understand what's about to be shared with the application. For example, it says here, the system wants to share the contents of your screen with OBS Studio, select a screen or window to share. This is fantastic. I really enjoy the fact that they're letting us know what exactly is going to be recorded or shared with an application. It adds a lot extra level of privacy and security on top of things, so great idea. Although when I hit share on here, at least with this version of OBS Studio, somehow I've gotten to mess up. I had to install a whole different version of OBS Studio in order to get this work. Although they are the same major version, this one will not capture the screen no matter how much I try. I've deleted the screen capture quite a few times. I've tried different routes. It just doesn't show up. Initially, it did show up after I hit the share button, but after closing it down and trying to open it back up and hitting the share once more, it did not want to work. So what do I mean by this? Well, I'll show you one more time here because it tries to kind of fake you out, to be honest. It does want to work for a moment and it's just on the share screen. Look at that. It says, okay, we can share or we can at least see this DP1 monitor in the screen. When I hit share though, nothing pops up in the selector screen. And when I hit okay, nothing pops up. Although, as you can tell, I'm clearly recording it in the other version, which is just a little weird. Not sure what's going on there. Personally, I think it's something wrong with that permission tool, but I did want to make people aware that that's currently happening. Now let's discuss some of the fixed bugs or improvements. Fixed vertical monitor screenshots. It was hard to get vertical monitor screenshots. Shout out to Brody for discussing this one multiple times. Looks like they have this fix. I'm gonna have to talk to them to figure out whether or not it actually works. Show hidden files. Toggle no longer resets after selecting show details. Open item location, right click menu option added. New files can be saved to a new folder. Added the ability to rename files with using file search. Right and middle click now close context menus. Cancel the authentication for installing sys packages. Now cancels the operation. Fix an issue causing pixelation. Fix an issue causing server side decorations. Fix the panic that occurred when mirroring displays. Hopefully that is getting better because I've had issues in the past. Right now I'm not using two displays just for the fact that I've had so many bugs going on with using multiple displays. I've just chosen to go to one, but no big deal. That's all expected. Again, we're only in the alpha phase and this desktop experience is fantastic. I mean, I have it fully installed here on one of my desktop computers and it's been working great. A few more patches for panics, gaps, can now be set below three. We've upgraded kernel compatibility up to 6.12 and a lot of other small updates, which is fantastic to see as the System76 is hard at work. The one funny one that I had before was if you created a new file, for example, let's just create something here and I try to drag and drop it. That wasn't working quite well earlier, but now we can tell that's working just fine. Let me just make sure it actually went in here before I say that. Okay, it's right here, new file, all good. That was one of the things mentioned in there and I just wanted to try it out real quick because that was a little frustrating early. One other frustration that I've been having is Bluetooth. If for example, I wanted to connect my keyboard, which now you can see it says MX Keys Mini Connected. Well, as you can tell here, I'm recording it currently and you can see this blinking light, which just signifies that it cannot actually connect. Although it says connected, it can't connect because I can't authorize the keyboard to connect. On these types of keyboards, and we can see that it disappeared here, not a big deal. On those particular types of keyboards, you have to enter a pin. I'd like if whenever you choose a Bluetooth device, such as a keyboard that's fully Bluetooth and not through a USB dongle Bluetooth, that a dialog would pop up and I can enter in the pin in order to verify the keyboard. The keyboard needs a pin number from the operating system so that it can actually pair correctly via Bluetooth. Anyways, 
I've just been having that issue for quite a while. I want to make sure that people are aware you may have some problems connecting Bluetooth devices that require pins. Another issue that I've been running into lately is sleep. I definitely want to show this one off as well. So here we go. I call it sleep, but it's known as suspend here. If I go to suspend the computer, I'm going to have a really hard time getting back in. You can see that my monitor is currently off. It looks like when it goes to suspend or hibernate, the big issue here is that it never comes back from that suspension or hibernation. You do see that there's something trying to render in the background. The cursor does move occasionally like it's trying, but it's just incapable. All right, we're back on the desktop environment, checking things out. Another thing that seems to be off is the post that's related to Cosmic Alpha 5 is not currently on the blog, although it does exist as a blog. Not sure if it was missed. Just throwing it out there. If someone on the System76 team sees this, check and see if it was missed on the feed of the blog. Overall, I love to see this new release as the team really has been doing a great job behind this desktop environment. So many new things coming to us and just barely in the year, January 9th is when this Alpha 5 was released and they're already giving us great bug fixes and improvements. I love seeing the new year kick off with such great dev. I'm really hoping the excitement continues behind this cosmic desktop based on Rust. If you do have some bugs yourself, make sure to post them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you as well. Maybe I've ran into some of the similar things and I've forgotten about them. And also let me know what else you're excited about. One great thing is I've been using this desktop environment also on Fedora and it's working really well, if not better than what I got working here on Pop! OS. I would like to see some memory optimizations as well. I'm going to show off some memory here, although take it with a grain of salt as I do have OBS running in the back. We'll still check it out because right now it's using around three gigs out of my 32 gigs. And if I check out OBS is currently grabbing about a gig of that. So we're really looking more towards around two gigs of memory usage. If we look at the system details, we can see that this is currently the 6.9 kernel. We can work our way up to the 6.12. I've only been up for eight minutes here and I have 1,820 source packages with 15 flat packs. And I'm using currently around three gigs out of 32 gigs of memory on the system. The desktop environment is still running a little high when it comes to memory usage. Although it's actually given a little extra memory in order for some caching to take place from what I understand, which actually helps smoothen out the experience of the desktop environment. I do know that the System76 team does plan on making some more optimizations to this before it's released, so we can't really judge it on that currently, but I know a lot of people wonder what it looks like. It's somewhere around that two gig mark as I'm currently running a gig of memory just for OBS to record things. Regardless of that, we'll see how that ties up whenever we get the official release as that's probably the best time worth noting the memory usage. If you enjoyed following along today and going in depth here, don't forget to smash that like button in order to support the channel and get others interested into this Linux content. And if you made it to the end, you're a true supporter. Don't forget to subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another video like this. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to SavvyNick.com now and get access to these sheets.